Welcome, everyone, episode 13 of How to Become a Doctor. Uh, look, if you haven't checked out other episodes, we do have 12 other episodes, so please watch those. Uh, and, of course, there will be ones in the future after this. Uh, but tune in. Uh, Mr. Robbie Bowen, our director of free health programs, is, is running this one today. He'll introduce our guest. Yeah, thanks for, um, thanks for joining us um, today or watching this um, broadcast. So today our guest um, is a former Tiger that we're happy to uh, welcome back. So um, Michael Denham is joining us today. Michael went um, here for undergrad at LSU. He graduated with his Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts in Economics, I believe. And that was in 2018, right, Michael? Yep, and then right. he spent a year um, in England at Cambridge, where he got a master's degree in philosophy before going on to medical school. He now is in year four um, at Columbia School of Medicine. So you see the light at the end of the tunnel um, as year four. So, Michael, thank you for joining us. And I'm just going to let you say hello and tell them anything that you want to tell them about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so like you mentioned, I uh, did chemical engineering and economics over at LSU. And then I applied to med school in my senior year and ultimately ended up uh, deferring because I was so burnt out from like, I think kind of taking maybe like an unreasonable course load at times. Um, and the engineering classes were also quite draining, even though I did love the combination of math and science. Um, and so I decided to spend some time in the UK doing medical humanities stuff. Um, the program was a, an MPhil or Masters of Philosophy in Health, Medicine and Society, which basically was a, a hodgepodge of history, philosophy, sociology and anthropology. Um, and that was absolutely amazing. Um, also gave me some nice time to travel to. And then after that, I started med school over at Columbia. And so like you mentioned, I'm in my fourth year. I'm also doing a research year right now. So I guess next year I will be a super senior um, and a four plus. <laughs> okay. So, um, so just tell us a little bit about your process of like from, from Mandeville to Baton Rouge to England to New York, like what was what was going on with you? How, how did you figure out what you wanted to do? Sure. Um, so, I mean, LSU, I thought offered a really good um, financial package and the fact that it was close to home and I was still able to participate in a lot of the same communities that I was a part of um, while I was you know, growing up, I think was really enticing. And then additionally, I knew there was like a strong engineering program that I wanted to take part, of, part in as well. Um, I decided to do engineering specifically because I really liked math and science. And I figured if I decided not to go into medicine, I would still be interested somewhere in the combination of, of math and science there. So that is why I did engineering, despite like knowing pretty much from the get-go that I was interested in going to medical school. Um, and by the way, if I'm talking and you hear a little cat rustling around, I apologize. <laughs> I just got a kitten like 10 days ago. Um, so she's still very much exploring the apartment. Um, but so I going in, knew I wanted to do medicine, but also allowed engineering to be sort of this like exploration of personal interests and a plan B if I decided not to do medicine. The econ was purely out of um, kind of self-interest. Back in high school, I uh, had a really good uh, macroeconomics teacher and ended up like basically teaching myself microeconomics so I could take the AP class or I'd take the AP test at the end of uh, high school and fell in love with it. And I really liked the ability to pick up the Wall Street Journal or New York Times and understand a lot of the economic terms that they were throwing around. Um, and so that's why that combination was exciting to me. And luckily there was enough space between the engineering and econ curricula that I was able to fit in a lot of the required medical courses as well. Um, and then, so let's see, I, I guess that's about undergrad. Um, and then because I had like a really intense uh, STEM based curriculum, Throughout undergrad, I wanted 
a little more of that humanities background. Um, and so whenever I deferred in senior year, uh, I felt like I wanted to make sure that it was something within that, that space that was feeding maybe a little more like creative side of me. Um, I mean, like the very first profession I ever wanted when I was growing up was to be a writer. Um, and I think that still has stuck with me. Uh, but so that was part of the reason that I, I ended up doing that Cambridge program. Uh, also, I had read When Breath Becomes Air uh, by Paul Kalanithi, and he was in the same department that I ended up applying into um, and felt like that was too good of an opportunity to, to pass up. That's our that's our book club that we're doing this year. We're reading oh, that great. book. Fantastic book. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you, I mean, you always you always were pre med. You just were sort of branching out and kind of um, broadening your horizons a little bit. With um, so I know you're still writing. You've published some articles and some things like that. Um, so you still have time to do that, even though you're you're in med school. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does take some deliberate you know, apportioning of time. Um, and at times there's, you know, I have to acknowledge a trade-off of, I could learn 100% of everything there is to know within the medical textbooks, or I can pick a percentage that I'm okay with and know that I will be like a doctor that I am happy with and can also fulfill some of the other sides of myself that I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and that's a trade-off that I think everyone makes for themselves based on their personal interests and devotion to various things. Uh, but I've definitely had time to write, um, especially during this research year, I've made it a priority that I want to be writing more and to lean into that side of myself, uh, specifically because I would love for writing to be a significant part of my career. So um, let's move to like the application process to med school. So, um, you know, where did you apply? Where did, you know, what schools did you consider and why did you ultimately decide on Columbia? Sure. Um, so I think possibly inspired by some of the neuroticism on student doctor network, <laughs> um, I maybe applied to somewhere between 30 and 40 programs. Wow. I made like a Google sheet for myself where I sort of broke up the differences between all the programs and kind of put them into like specific buckets. Um, I made a document that had all of the secondaries for all of the programs in advance and was starting to write them um, even before like I sent in my application. And I think that was really helpful, although by no means that I finished writing all of the secondaries before all of that. Um, it was definitely just like, it was good to know the lay of the land before jumping in and then getting like 20 secondaries within a few weeks where I would have to like write everything from scratch. Um, so I knew like going in that I was going to be really organized with how I approached the application process. And then I ended up getting, I think like 13 interviews. Um, and let's see, my first one was maybe in... August, like the beginning of August, I think. And the last one, uh, I think was perhaps at the beginning of or beginning or end of January. Um, and ultimately I did all but one of the interviews. I did have to cancel um, one at UCSD, even as much as I um, would have loved to check it out. Um, I was just overwhelmed with, I think that week I was scheduled to have four different interviews. Um, like two different, like a fellowship program, my interview at Cambridge and then interviews at UCSF and Stanford. And I was like, okay, I can't fit in UCSD at the same time. Um, and by that point, I had also found out that I had gotten um, into Northwestern. Um, so ultimately at the end of the process, um, I got accepted into LSU, Northwestern, Yale and Columbia. And I got waitlisted to, um, I think most of the other programs that I had interviewed at. Um, and I also knew while I was like navigating this that I, like by the time I was doing second looks, I knew that I was probably going to be deferring for a year. Um, and 
that was really helpful. So I was able to like tell Columbia, Hey, I want to go here, but I would also love to do this Cambridge program because that seems like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and luckily they were really um, like welcoming to that possibility. And actually one of my classmates did the exact same thing at Cambridge as well um, in deferring. So yeah, I mean, I guess what specifically about the application process would be helpful for, for applicants to know from, from that? Yeah, no, I just think like, you know, how did you come about which school was the fit for you, I guess? Like what, what types of criteria did you use or whatever? Yeah, um, so I think it was a lot. I spent a lot of time looking at websites, basically trying to figure out how to characterize each school. Um, different programs have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, for instance, I thought it was important to look at, but didn't necessarily know how to make sense of it, whether schools would have one year long preclinical, one and a half or two year long preclinical. Personally, I thought um, by the end of it that like one and a half would be nicer than a two year long preclinical just so I could get to the meat of medical school a little bit quicker. Um, but it's also important to recognize that there's a trade off in that like you're thrown in with maybe less preparation. Um, but it's also okay, like everyone can make it like through that year. Um, even the ones that ha only do like a year of preclinical. Um, I think probably one of the biggest things that I took note of was whether programs had a robust like arts and humanities curriculum. I knew that I wanted to do some sort of writing. Narrative medicine was interesting to me. Um, and the idea of having a uh, an undergrad campus that was within close proximity to the med school, um, I think was pretty important. And that's something that all the um, medical schools have, like some of them, like for instance, Mayo um, doesn't have like a university campus nearby. Some of them um, might have the university campus kind of a little farther away. I mean, all of which is okay. I just knew that personally, if I could choose, it would be nice to have, um, the university close by to the medical school. Um, and so also I was like, spending significant amount of time looking at like, you know, the English department, if they have a narrative medicine program, what does that look like? Um, how is that integrated within the medical curriculum that all the med students do? And then what kinds of elective opportunities were available for students? Um, sometimes when I was doing this navigation process, I would like try and, I don't know, uh, reach out to different students that I could network my, my way to, um, and then would spend time uh, talking with them and trying to get a little bit more information about their experience at the school, um, whether they were enjoying it, what they thought the strengths and weaknesses of their particular program were, and also to ask for any particular advice they had about interviewing. Um, and then also, I think, I mean, I am, I did end up in New York. Location was important for me too. Um, I did want to go somewhere where I was able to take advantage of the cultural scene. I love um, film, theater, museums. Um, the food scene here is incredible. I mean, coming from Louisiana, I think food was very important for me. Um, and I wanted to come to a place that I would be really excited to walk outside every day. Um, and luckily, I think I've found that with Columbia. So that was going to kind of be my next question. Like, um, so New York City as, as, a, as a medical student, I mean, like, um, it's pretty expensive. I mean, there's a, how do you, like, do you have, did you live on campus? How did you transition to New York? Yeah, so I um, started out living on campus. And then uh, we ultimately got, like, kicked out of our dorms during COVID. Um, and so I was living away and all of us were doing school virtually for a while. And then when I came back to campus, I lived in an off-campus apartment for two years, um, which was really nice. I mean, actually my rent in that apartment, uh, I was living with four other roommates, uh, or sorry, three other roommates. And my room was admittedly small, um, but it was also the cheapest rent that I had ever paid in my life. 
Um, it was $600 a month, um, which was quite nice. I mean, like my rent at LSU was more expensive than that. Not by much, but like it was still more expensive. Um, and I ultimately decided that I was going to actually move back into student housing because I think the options that Columbia has are really good. Um, so right now I'm in a three bedroom apartment. Um, my room is very spacious and I have a view of the Hudson River with the George Washington Bridge right outside. Um, that's responsible for the sunlight uh, coming <laughs> in my room right now. Uh, and so I'm able to set up my desk to face that and look at it every day. So um, we have, if you're on and you have some questions for Michael, you can either put those in the chat or we'll, um, you can open, um, you can unmute yourself and we'll, we'll let you ask. I want to give them a chance to ask you any questions also, Michael, that they have. But sure. um, one thing that we did want to talk to you about is, um, so we, we've started a narrative medicine um, sort of cohort here that we're doing this this year with some students and we're sort of exploring reading, writing, sort of some of the other um, cultural areas um, in preparation for becoming a doctor. So can you just talk a little bit about the narrative program there? I mean, you're, you know, Columbia started this whole sort of movement and Dr. Sharon and all that. So can you just talk a little bit about how that's incorporated into medical school for, for you? Sure. So at Columbia, uh, narrative medicine is something that's integrated from like the first year. Um, specifically, there are narrative medicine sessions that we have with our small groups uh, where we might read like a short story or a poem and then use that as a way to reflect on some of our clinical encounters um, or to reflect on how it relates to us as we're forming our own identities as future healthcare providers. Um, additionally, we have a narrative medicine course that everyone has to take um, by the end of their first year. And so that can be anything from like a course where you go to the Met or the Frick and you look at paintings and focus on how to look at things and really notice the details, uh, which has obvious implications for how you would notice some of those small details in a clinic, for instance. Um, they had like poetry courses, they had courses where you would write obituaries uh, for the anatomy donors. Um, they had courses based on film, uh, based on black music, culture and I think it was really nice to be able to participate in that. Unfortunately, some of the museum options had to get canceled for us because yeah. that was in the COVID era, uh, but I believe those are back now, which is super exciting. Um, additionally, uh, I guess while I've been here, there have been a couple of workshops that have started up. So specifically, uh, we have the narrative medicine journalism workshop, which I think was the first one that started right after COVID began. And so I was a part of that inaugural group. Um, it's about a dozen uh, people from across the medical center. Uh, my group just happened to be uh, mostly uh, doctors and then I think about four med students. And then I think now we're on the fourth iteration of the group. Um, but essentially this was a workshop that took place over about a semester. And now we've been meeting monthly ever since then. And the goal was to get people within medicine to think about how to write journalistically. Um, so how to pitch articles to organizations like New York Times, um, The Atlantic, New Yorker, um, and do interviews with people. So not patient interviews, but interviews just like a journalist would do and how to think like a journalist. And that's been super nice. I mean, people in the group have been published in The New Yorker, um, in like The New York Times and The Washington Post. Um, and I was able to develop a relationship with uh, Nautilus magazine, uh, which has been super rewarding. Uh, there's also a creative writing, I think, prose workshop um, that's been started up as well. Um, and that's, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I know people have really, really enjoyed that as well. There's also this like studio lab collective, basically, where people across the medical campus can come together and share whatever uh, 
you know, creative projects that they're working on. It might be photography, uh, it could be painting, it could be you know, writing, and it's just an opportunity for creative people to come together and share stuff within the medical community. Okay. So we do have a question for you. Um, it, this question says, do you have any tips for, act, for the actual application process? I plan on taking a gap year and as a first generation college student, navigating how to apply has been frustrating. Um, so I guess, could I have a follow-up to that? What in particular has been frustrating about trying to navigate? Like what, what do you think is most frustrating about that from your perspective? If you're on. Yeah, if you're if you're comfortable, you can unmute yourself and respond or you can type it and I'll relay it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I think um, probably from that point, it's most important to talk to people so to make sure that you have a community of people who are doing it with you. Um, the med school application process is not one that should be approached alone. I know I had so many different groups of people read my personal statement, um, provide input on all of the different like, short answers that I was sending out in secondaries or in my primary application. Um, it is a lot to look at. Um, I can understand head spinning. Uh, I was super stressed out about the process. Um, also, it's like super expensive too. Um, I had no idea coming into this how much money would be, you know, extracted from uh, pre-med students every year in an attempt to apply. I found it super helpful, especially since I was coming kind of outside the College of Science in talking with some of my friends who were in the College of Science or some of my other uh, friends within engineering or at other schools who happened to be applying to med school at the same time. So we were kind of able to prepare notes, make sure that we weren't forgetting things, um, talk about a lot of the stresses like of, uh, you know, preparing for the MCAT or preparing for interviews. And having that support net network was absolutely crucial to making sure that I like knew everything was in order as I was moving forward. Um, also, most of the information about applying is online somewhere. Um, I have found Reddit to be a super useful resource. I did rely at the time on Student Doctor Network. Um, and I thought it was, at least at that time, um, I guess like four or five years ago, uh, a very useful website for kind of getting information about um, primary applications, secondaries, like how to develop a school list, all of that stuff. Um, and so I would specifically recommend look online to just read as much as you can about how the application process works. And then for any gaps that you have, then that's when you can start asking people who might be like experts in those things or people like, you know, who are a couple years ahead of you who have already like been through that process. Um, it absolutely helps like reaching out to people. Um, additionally, I personally have had people reach out to me and say like, hey, saw you're from Louisiana. Would you mind reading my personal statement? Um, and one, I think it's really nice to hear from someone in my home state um, saying like, hey, can you help me with this? Uh, and so if I you know, am able with my time to do so, I, I will. Um, and I think other, many other med students would probably have that same approach. Um, so you know, I don't think cold emailing is out of the question either if you want to do some searching on LinkedIn or something like that. But don't, don't be afraid to, like if you feel frustrated or confused, um, take advantage of the resources that are on campus. I know um, I definitely talked to uh, Robbie Bowen a few times while I was you know, trying to apply. I worked a lot with uh, Dr. Drew LaMonica Arms at the Honors College on crafting my personal statement. Um, application is something you do with the team. Okay, anybody else, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can type it and we'll relay it. Um, 
while we're waiting, Michael, so you, so I'm sure at Columbia, you have um, classmates from everywhere, like all over the country and lots of um, Ivy League schools and things like that. So um, how did you fit in as an LSU student in, in this, you know, eclectic group of people? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not notice uh, whenever you're coming in and you're starting to introduce yourself to everyone that, oh, wow, you know, maybe I think possibly the school with the most students in my class um, was like Harvard. Um, and that pattern is pretty similar with a lot of the other Ivy League undergraduate programs. Um, that said, there are a ton of students from state schools, um, also a decent number of students from like the South as well. And just kind of out of random chance, I started befriending a lot of the other people that were from the South. Um, and some of my friends in my immediate friend group are also uh, specifically from like state schools as well. Uh, but also any kind of like differences about like, I don't know, between students as far as like the undergrad programs are coming from, all that stuff like goes away relatively quickly. And then you realize, oh, everyone is drinking from the same fire hose and everyone is struggling in one way or another. Um, and we're also all gonna get through it. Um, and like that community starts to develop relatively quickly. So I think it's like, definitely I, I look back on how, I don't know, that imposter syndrome was creeping in during the beginning of medical school and compared to how I feel now about like knowing where everyone went to undergrad and stuff like that. Um, and that information matters a lot less. Um, okay, so I, I wanna be respectful. We told you 30 minutes. I, I wanna respect your, respect your time. I really, really appreciate you do. If you, um, if you, if you're um, open to that and you would like to put your email in the chat, we can share that with the people if they want to have questions, if they have questions for you. If you're not, that's fine too. But um, just finishing up, I wanted to ask you, so what is your advice for students about, first of all, just getting into medical school in general? And then if there is someone who's interested specifically in Columbia, what would you, um, what would be your advice? Sure. So I would say if someone is interested in medical school um, and is still trying to figure out whether they want to apply, um, shadowing is really helpful. And probably the most important thing is talking to people in medical school um, and then trying to use those connections to maybe talk to people who are in residency or talk to like actual doctors um, because you're gonna get a lot of opinions in talking to people who are actually in the hospital every day. And I think those opinions are extremely useful. Um, like I, I don't think coming in that I knew very much about what it was going to be like practicing as a doctor. I don't have anyone who's a doctor in my family. Um, and most of the time when I was able to shadow doctors, it was people I would meet through teachers or through like friends, parents. Um, and that stuff was valuable, but you just have to cast a really wide net so you can get as many, many opinions as possible. Um, because I think over time you start putting together some sort of like amalgamation of all of these opinions and then figure out, oh, do I wanna be part of that system? Um, also reading, I think it's really nice to read books by doctors and read articles by doctors, read those descriptions of people who are in the hospital taking care of patients and see if that's something you vibe with. Um, if you are interested in Columbia specifically, uh, number one, I would say read everything on the website, um, like do your research. Uh, I think from the pre-med perspective, if you're going to reach out to medical students, um, definitely make sure you do your research on like the med school the person goes to and get whatever information you can get off the internet first before you reach out to them. Um, one, I think it's like just really respectful of that person's time. Um, like for instance, if someone were to ask me about MCAT prep, I am a little more removed from that 
now. And so it makes probably more sense to get information off of Reddit, off of Student Talking Network, off of um, you know the counseling services, off of classmates and people in classes above you uh, before reaching out to someone who's a little more removed from the situation. Um, that said, if you read the stuff on the website, you take advantage of the resources that are available and you have questions. You wanna get a little more information about you know, what the lived experience is, is like in the hospital, um, in the school, absolutely reach out if you want you know, someone's personal statement or like your personal statement to be read. Um, I don't think it hurts to cold email a student um, and say like, hey, I noticed your interests are pretty similar to mine. Um, would you mind having a look at my personal statement or taking 15 minutes to chat with me? Um, a lot of people would be super open to that. Um, so be open to putting yourself out there. Um, if you're interested in Columbia, one information about what it's like to move from Louisiana to New York, um, what it's like to go from LSU to like Columbia, which does have like a different academic environment. Um, I think all of those things are super valid questions and I'm happy to talk with students uh, via email or over the phone or something. Um, I know you're going to be talking to AED. You're going to be doing a, an AED meeting as well, right? Is that coming up? Yes. Um, I think it was originally planned to be virtual. I was going to tell them that I actually will be visiting home. Oh, really? Time. Oh, cool. So I will probably be able to pop by LSU's campus. Excellent. Okay. So Again, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I think that you know, um, letting our students hear from you guys is really helpful. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know, I know you're busy. No problem. I hope uh, some of the stuff I had to say was helpful. And if there are any more questions, feel free to email. Um, happy to help as much as I can. Okay. Thanks.